Hello and welcome to this lecture where you are going to learn how artificial neuron works, which is called perceptron. Remembering that before you learned about the biological fundamentals of neural networks, especially the components of the neuron and how information flows through the whole neural network. Let's start by reviewing the picture of a neuron which receives input from the dendrites, processes the information in the cell body, and transmits it through the axon, generating an output. The inputs are data from the environment, and the outputs at the end is the final response of the perceptron such as a prediction of something. As you learned before, in biological networks, electrical signals are transmitted. Otherwise, in artificial neural networks, data is transmitted. Now let's look at the representation of the artificial neuron. We can see in this image the inputs that are data from the environment for example, there are three inputs, number one, number seven, and number five. Don't worry now about what these values represent. In the second part, we can see the weights, 0 0.8, 0 0.1, and 0. Each input has a corresponding weight. Then, we can see the sum function and the step function. In order to be easier to understand this representation, let's perform the calculations step by step. The first one is the sum function. We will get the inputs and the weights and apply this equation. You can see that we are multiplying xi by wi. It means that the inputs will be multiplied by the corresponding weights, and then this symbol indicates that we will add the values. Let's perform the calculation step by step. 1 times 0 point weight, the first input, times the corresponding first weight, plus 7 times 0 0.1 plus 5 times 0, 0 0.8 plus 0 0.7 plus 0. The result of the sum function is 1.5. Now, we need to apply the step function, which is the simplest operation at the end. If the number is greater or equal to 1, the result is 1. Otherwise, the result is 0. 1.5 is greater than 1, so the output of the perceptron is equal to 1. Let's take a look at another example. See that instead 1, the value for the first neuron is minus 1. Let's apply the sum function again. Input times the weight minus 1 times 0 0.8 plus 7 times 0 0.1 plus 5 times 0 minus 0 0.8 plus 0 0.7 plus 0. The result of the sum function is minus 0 0.1. When we apply the step function, the output is 0, because the result of the sum function is not greater or equal to 1. So, the output for these values and these weights equals 0. This is the basic idea of how the calculations are performed in an artificial neuron. Don't worry about what are the inputs and the weights. We will take a look at more detail 
in some minutes. Now let's take a look at this other example, which is the AND operator. X1 and X2 are the inputs, and the class is the outputs. And the goal will be to train a perceptron to learn the relations between X1 and X2. This table is the same used in logic and in computer programming. For example, if X1 is 0 and X2 is 0, the result is also 0 or false. If X1 is false and X2 is 1 or true, the result is 0. If X1 is 1 and X2 is 0 or false, the result is 0. And finally, if X1 is true and X2 is true or 1, the result is 1. The goal is to train a neural network to receive this data, X1 and X2, and predict the correct class, if it is true or if it is false. Now, let's move on to the step-by-step -step calculations. We need to select each one of the rows. In this image, we can see 0 and 0, x1 and x2. Now, we need to apply the sum function and also the activation function. See that the weights are equals to 0. And now, it is easier to understand what the inputs are. They are information that comes from the environment. In this particular case, the goal is to predict the class using the logical operators x1 and x2, values true or false. If you are working with a commercial application, maybe the inputs would be the age of the person, the salary, the marital status, and so on. In short, the inputs are information that comes from the environment and you send to the neural network in order to perform the calculations. Let's apply the sum function, input times weight plus input times weight. The result is zero. When we apply the step function, see that zero is not equal or greater to one, so the output for this instance is zero. Now we will move on to the next row, 0 and 1, as you can see here. Let's apply the sum function 0 times 0 plus 1 times 0. The result is 0. When we apply the step function, the output is also 0, since 0 is not greater or equal to 1. Let's move on to the next row, 1 and 0, according to the table. Applying the sum function, 1 times 0 plus 0 times 0, the result equals 0. When we apply the step function, the result is also 0. Finally, let's move on to the last row, 1 and 1, according to the table. 1 times 0, input times weight, plus input times weight equals 0. Applying the step function, the result is also 0. This last part of the calculation are considered to be the outputs or the predictions of the neural network. So, now we need to compare the outputs of the neural network with the expected outputs, which is in this column here, the true values. We can apply the simple equation in this first column. You can see the expected outputs, which is in the table, and in the second column, 
are the predictions of the neural network, all zero. The error is zero for the three first rows since the predictions are equal to the expected outputs. But regarding the last row, 1 minus 0 equals 1. So, the error for these calculations is equal to 1. The expected output is 1, but the prediction of the neural network is 0. We can conclude that the accuracy of the perceptron is 75%. Three instances were correctly classified, and one instance was incorrectly classified. The expected output is 1, and the prediction was 0. What we need to do now is to apply an equation in order to update the weights of the perceptron to get other predictions values. So, we can apply this equation. The weight in the next epoch of the neural network is the current weight plus the learning rate times the input and times the error. Let's see it in detail. We can consider this last row. Zero, it is the current weight plus the learning rate. This is a parameter specified by the developer, which indicates how fast the weights will be adjusted. For this simple example, we will consider this value 0.1. Let's multiply by the input. The input is 1 by the error. See that the error equals 1. The result of this equation is 0.1. So, instead of making the calculations considering weights equal 0, we will update the weights, and now they will be 0.1. Then, we need to perform the calculations again. For example, 0, the input, times 0 0.1, plus 0 times 0 0.1 for all the rows of the neural network. But if we perform all these calculations considering the weights equals to 0 0.1, the results will be the same. The outputs will be the same, and we will still get this error for this last row. Then, we need to calculate the weights again until we get zero here. Let's take a look at another calculation using weights equals 0 0.5. It's important to emphasize that the weights will be the same for all the four rows. 0 times 0 0.5 plus 0 times 0 0.5. The sum function is 0. When we apply the step function, the result is also 0, since 0 is not greater or equal to 1. Let's move on to the next row. The sum function is 0 0.5. However, 0 0.5 is not greater or equal to 1, so the output is 0. Moving on to the next row, 1 and 0, you can see the calculations. The result is 0 0.5, which is not greater or equal to 1, so the output is 0. Finally, 1 times 0 0.5, plus 1 times 0 0.5, the result of the sum function is 1. Now, we need to apply the step function. As 1 is equal or greater than 1, the result or the output is 1. So, now we can apply the same subtraction. In the first column, 
are the expected outputs. In the second column, the predictions of the neural network. And we can see that the error is zero. So using these two sets of weights, we are able to make a prediction. The neural network has just learned that when the weights for x1 and x2 are equal to 0 0.5, it is possible to learn the relation between the end logical operator. We can conclude that the knowledge in neural networks is the values of the weights. The goal of a neural network is to find, to classify the data. And the equation to adjust the weights will be performed until we get both weights to be able to classify the rows. This is the training of a neural network. To finish this lecture, let's see these images. We can see that this is the end logical operator. This other image here is the XOR logical operator. And this last one is the OR logical operator. We can see that for the AND and OR operators, we can draw a straight line, for example, in this part here, where I am pointing the mouse, and the classes will be separated. When drawing a line here, see that to the left side is class 0, and to the right side is class 1. On the other hand, when we draw a straight line here in the OR logical operator, class 0 is to the left and class 1 is to the right. But see that for the XOR logical operator, it is not possible to draw a straight line. For example, if we draw the line here, see that class 0 will be to the right and to the left. If we draw a straight line in the horizontal, class 0 and 1 will not be separated. If we draw a vertical line here, the classes will not be separated, 1 and 0 for both sides. And finally, if we draw a straight line here, where I am pointing the mouse, the classes won't be separated, 0 to one side and 0 to the other side. It means that the XOR logical operator is not linearly separable because we cannot draw a straight line to separate the classes. On the other hand, the AND and the OR logical operators are considered linearly separable because we can draw a straight line to separate the classes. And the problem of the single layer perceptron is that it works well for simple problems. When you have a commercial and complex problem, it is not possible to solve it using a single layer perceptron. So we need more complex architectures. And in the next lecture, you are going to learn the multi-layer perceptron which is a quite more complex architecture to solve real-world problems. See you there!